So we're now going to take another look at using ChatGPT to learn some new features of programming with Spring and Java. And we're also going to apply it in order to be able to convert some manually generated Spring proxy code in the code that uses the automatically generated retrofit mechanism. So here's the context. I've been teaching a class on Spring microservices. And in that class, I've been teaching the students to handwrite the proxy code. This is the code that's used on the client to be able to make HTTP GET requests and POST requests to one or more microservices running in the background. And so here's an example of the code that I wrote originally to teach them about that manually generates the proxies. You can see here we've got a class called quote proxy legacy, which is just the old class I had. It has an auto wired rest template and it's got a bunch of methods here that are proxy methods like get all quotes or get quotes. And these take a bunch of parameters and then they use some mechanisms that are provided by Spring to go ahead and create the HTTP requests, <clears throat> either get requests or post requests, building them up incrementally. So here we're going to go ahead and make a request that has a particular microservice followed by the route name. And then we're going to take the parameters here, which is a list of integers, and we're going to convert those into a string. And we're going to go ahead and add them as a query parameter. <clears throat> we're also going to take another parameter that's the parallel parameter and go ahead and add that as a query parameter. We then build the URI, convert it into a URI string. And then we use another little helper method I wrote that takes the rest template and the generated URI and makes a get request on the server. Now all this code works and it's relatively straightforward given the little helper methods I wrote. But let's be honest, who wants to write code like this? We'd much rather have this done automatically. And it turns out you can do that with something called retrofit, which among other things, will generate these proxies automatically. Now, I haven't taught this before because quite frankly, I just hadn't had time to learn how the retrofit API worked and I knew how to do it manually. So I decided what I would do is see if ChatGPT can simplify the process of learning this retrofit API and also generate a lot of the code along the way to make it possible to do this. So what I did is I went over and went to my controller interface, which is uh, the interface that's providing the various endpoint handler methods annotated with Spring features. And I just went in here and I cut and pasted, custom cut and pasted the interesting endpoint handler methods, comments and all, and I did a uh, copy. And then I took those methods and I went over to a fresh instance of ChatGPT. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, please strip the comments from this Java code and print it inside of a Spring controller named quote services. So let's see if it's smart enough to do that. So here's the code that I cut and pasted before. And uh, lo and behold, we're going to see how ChatGPT thinks for a little bit, and then it strips out the comments. And you can see that we've got the comments removed. And it now thinks this is inside of a controller called Spring Controller. So it's going to go ahead and just write out that code that's just there so we don't have to deal with all the uh, comments to, to clutter things up. So you can see what it did is it just wrote out the HTTP endpoints. So now let's go ahead and say, please generate a retrofit client API based on the endpoint methods defined in the quote services controller. And uh, hopefully it'll be smart enough to be able to do that. So it's assuming that we've got the annotations with Spring, which we did. And uh, it explains what it's going to do. <clears throat> and now it's going to give us some instructions about the steps to do this, which will we'll follow this in a moment. Uh, but First, let's see what it can generate. So you can see it knows how to import the appropriate retrofit classes. And now it's going to generate a new interface called quote services client or quote service client. And you can see there that it's gone ahead and created the corresponding retrofit methods on the client side, which are essentially going to be proxies for everything. So it's going to go ahead and generate the client as well, which we'll come back and look at. But I want to finish looking at the generated retroface retrofit interface first. So you can see that we've got get mapping for get all quotes, for post quotes, and for 
post searches. The latter two, of course, are, are post mappings, not get mappings. And then we've also got some other annotations. We have a request body to handle the list of integers. We've got a query to handle the Boolean uh, parallel parameter. And all these methods return uh, something of type call, which is basically a retrofit class that's used to invoke an operation on a server and then get the results back to check to see if things succeeded or failed. Now, it's looking pretty good so far. And you can also see that it went ahead and explained to me how I could create an instance of this particular uh, class. And uh, down here we have a quote services client. And that basically is created by using a retrofit builder, adding in the base URL to the server, adding in a converter factory to deal with JSON code and building it, and then going ahead and using the create quote service, uh, the create method to create an instance of the quote service client. So this is all good so far, but there's a couple things that are still missing. Let's go ahead and ask it to update this class, which is the quote services client, to add in dynamic path parameters uh, that will be used so we can actually direct these calls to different microservices, where each microservice is going to have its own route name indicated by a path annotation. And this is a little bit tricky. So let's see if I can do this here. So we'll say, please regenerate the quote services or quote service client uh, class so that each of its methods has a path parameter included prior to the the endpoint name so that I can dynamically add the route name for each of these method calls. And we'll see if it's able to, to figure this out. It's a little bit tricky and uh, it seems enthusiastic <laughs> to do this. Uh, and we'll see whether or not it's smart enough to actually make the code uh, what I want it to be. All right, so it, it didn't quite get it. You can see here that it, it added in this route, which is what I wanted, but it stripped out the, the name of the endpoint. For example, get all quotes or, or get quotes and so on. So uh, that's fine. It's, it's getting there. We haven't quite got all the pieces in place yet, but let's see if we can go ahead and tell it to, uh, to, to improve this. So let's stop generating and say, this is incorrect. Please uh, combine the path variable in the get mapping and post mapping with the original uh, path name that was used to identify the HTTP endpoint and regenerate the quote service client. So let's see if it's able to do that. As you can see, the, the uh, chat GPT is always very, uh, very polite when it makes a mistake. It apologizes for its confusion earlier. And now you can see it's doing it correctly. So what it's doing is it's creating a get mapping that has the route name followed by a slash followed by the original endpoint URL like get all quotes or post quotes and so on. And this is exactly what I want. This is the code that I want to have at this point. And so it'll go ahead and explain this a little bit further. And it, as you can see here, it's, it's teaching me that we can now dynamically pass the route name as a parameter to the method call. And now it's going to regenerate the code for creating one of these things, which is going to look very much like what it did before. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to say, please generate a client example that uses the retrofit uh, client API and quote service client class. So let's see if it can now go ahead and generate all the other code that I want that I would then just go ahead and cut and paste and use in place of the legacy code that I had before. So let's see if it's smart enough to do that generating a bunch of stuff. So here's the, the test program. You can see it kind of just picks up a fabricated uh, base URL, which is fine. 
it goes ahead and it creates this retrofit uh, builder and then it uses the retrofit builder to create an instance of the quote service client so far so good and now you can see it's going ahead and making the calls and in fact it's doing absolutely exactly what i want it to do it's making a call to the get all quotes proxy method which is the one that was automatically generated it's passing in the the route just picks up a route route one that's what i want it takes the get all quotes call call object and then it executes it and then it checks to see whether the results are successful or not. And as you can see, it doesn't stop there. It keeps doing this for all the other pro proxy methods that are part of the quote services client. So it uses, creates code to call get quotes, it creates code to call search, and so on and so forth. And I'm sure if I let this thing continue to run, it will then explain <laughs> what we've done with this. So this was exactly what I wanted. I took the results of this and I basically cut and pasted it. And I went back to my original code and then I have a new quote API, which I've commented a bit more, but you can see it looks pretty much identically to what was generated automatically by ChatGPT. So it's got the various get all quotes and get quotes and search proxy methods. These are all part of this interface that's generated automatically by the retrofit uh, mechanism. And then here's my new updated uh, quote proxy, and you can see the quote proxy goes ahead and auto wires itself to a quote API bean, which I have defined over here. And this is just the commented code that was generated more or less by ChatGPT. I just added some comments. By the way, ChatGPT gave me the comments to write here as well, because I gave it the code and asked it to explain it. So that was a lot of uh, lower effort on my part. And then finally, here's the actual proxies. This is the get all quotes proxy, which turns around and just forwards to the quote API get all quotes method, passing in the route, telling it to execute, and then checking to see what the results are, whether or not we succeeded, in which case we return the body, or we fail and we return null. There's better ways to do the error handling here, but I just wanted to get something that would work quickly. So you can see that this code here now uses all the generated retrofit code, and I think it's pretty clear that that is much less work when all is said and done than having to do the tedious and error-prone activities to write out the proxy code by hand. So the, the moral of the story here is that ChatGPT can be used to provide solutions very quickly. The solutions are usually very correct. With a few tweaks, I was able to integrate this with almost no effort on my part. And I was able to teach myself the retrofit API without spending hours and hours plowing through documentations online, trying to understand the whole big picture. Instead, I was able to use ChatGPT to focus my queries to learn more rapidly and then auto-generate the results.